Morning guys, um, so moving on today to the next chapter, um, this is a bit like the one the other day, these last few chapters are just a kind of wrapping everything up I suppose. Um, so yeah, there's not a huge amount in this again today, it's more, um, what's the right way to say it, it's more to get you thinking on the topic as opposed to actually teaching you anything and um, a bit like recycling and um the stuff we talked about the other day a lot of that knowledge especially with how um to the forefront of conversations it is before um before covid you know big conversations were around our election and the fact that we um there was a massive increase in the green party um candidates being elected and that was down to their green policies and how we need to improve as a country and the way we use fossil fuels and moving towards more renewable resources and things like that so um it's a conversation that's been had I'd say for the majority if not all of your lifetimes um and it's it's so prominent and it's so discussed that it's like I mean, I don't know, I struggle to, like, pick up a plastic bottle of water without thinking, oh, God, this is more plastic. Oh, I should have tried to buy something else, you know, and um, that type of thing. So I'd imagine you're in a similar boat. So it's more just to get you thinking about it if maybe it isn't something that you particularly engage in, like listening to the news or anything like that. Um, and this chapter is the same. Um, so I'm trying now to link them all to the junior cycle specifications so that's what this is down here okay and this is the closest I can get to it so um, students should be able to research and discuss the ethical and sustainability issues that arise from our generation and consumption of electricity um, so this is very similar to the other chapter except we're kind of focusing more in this around the impact of technology I suppose on our society um, and again it's just to get you thinking uh, people will have different opinions about this and even in science provided you can kind of back up your opinion I mean if, if you talk about the impact of social media for example I mean I think if we organized a debate which is what I would have done if I was in school um, but if we organized a debate on this um, arguing one side as to social media being a blessing and a great thing to have happened to our society and then on the other side arguing that it's a you know it's the end of our society as we know it whatever however dramatic you want to be and um, I think most people could argue both sides I mean there are definite advantages to social media there are huge positives that have come from it and the connect the connectivity of it all but then there are negatives I mean again we hear about them all the time, the negative impact, particularly on your generation, actually. Um, I think they're the, the most worried about your generation um, when it comes to your reliability on, or sorry, not reliability, your reliance on technology. Um, so anyway, this chapter is about prompting you to think about those kind of questions. That's essentially it, okay? So we'll go through, I kind of put in a bit of information here. Um, this first part is, like it links to this specification, but it's probably more about like, um, you can see it says fossil fuels there. It's more about consumption of fossil fuels than it is about the internet and stuff like that. So I just put it in because I feel like it links because this up here does talk about sustainability. Um, so I suppose in this bit here, just to, and it's all of this really, um, it's just to highlight the fact that there's a thing called Agenda 2030, um, and there's another name on it, like the Paris Agreement or something, but essentially all of the European countries have committed to certain targets by the year 2030, um, you know, this percentage renewable resources, this percentage of electric cars, a certain percentage of um, homes with solar panels, you know, things like that, all these kind of things that will improve the environment and will remove that reliance on fossil fuels. 
we're not doing great when it comes to these targets. Um, we're, we, we had targets for 2020 and we absolutely did not meet them. Now, in saying that, most of the European countries didn't meet them. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, we're making progress. We're just not making progress quickly enough. Um, so, you can see here, see this line here? For this reason, Ireland has a target for electricity generated by renewable resources of 42%. So 42% of our electricity generated in Ireland was supposed to be from renewable sources by 2020. Now, I don't know what the exact number is, but I don't think it's anywhere near 42%. So we just haven't made those strides. And um, the next bit here, I don't know if you've heard of a BER rating. Um, I bought a house in the last few years, so a BER rating is incredibly important when you're buying a house. Um, it essentially describes in a letter how leaky your house is in terms of heat. So if your house is super, super insulated and you, um, they do these tests with houses called passive houses and they're basically, they don't let any heat out. Um, and they test it by like pumping smoke into the house and then they test where it leaks out. And if it's only a certain amount leaks out, then it's classed as a passive house. And a BER rating is like, it's nowhere near a passive house, but you're working up from there. So if you have an A BER rating, then your house is really, really well insulated and it's not leaking a whole lot of heat out. And it goes right down to, I think G is the lowest BEO rating. So a BEO rating of G is quite poor. It means that you turn the heating on in your house and an hour later your house will be cold, um, which is obviously not very efficient. Um, most of our houses are working either on oil or natural gas. So back to the whole dependency on fossil fuels. If you build a house today, um, whether you're a contractor or just a person with a bit of land building a house, you can't put in a normal central heating system. You have to put in um, what's called an air to water a, a transfer. A, I don't know what the last word is, but um, essentially what it does is it uses the heat in the air and in that way it keeps the house warm. There's a whole ream of physics around how it works. Um, it's incredibly expensive to install, like 25,000 euro or something, but you then are not using gas, you're not using oil, you don't have those bills. So you can maintain the temperature in your house at like 20 odd degrees. There are other ones like geothermal, and um, there are other ones that you can use and people would have like solar panels, a whole rake of solar panels to try and heat their house. Um, but this is the one that the Irish government seem to be pushing. So now if you build a house, you'll see, I don't know if, if anybody has seen any new estates going up, but you'll notice that they all have solar panels on the roof. So if you're building a house now, it has to have a BER rating of A. Um, whereas anybody, like even my house, which I have, it's a 1970s house, but I fully insulated it. Um, it would still not be A because that's just not the way it was built. So it's just not going to be like doors. I got a new front door about two years ago and it's really hard to get a front door with a letterbox in it because a letterbox allows heat out. So that makes it less efficient. So all these little tiny things are hopefully coming together to make us use less energy. And um, the next bit down there, this little thing over here in the side, this thing, and um, I think we talked about this in class, actually, this is when you buy appliances now, they come with an energy rating. And um, so the higher the energy rating, the more expensive the appliance, but the idea being that it is more efficient in its use of electricity, so it won't cost you as much to run. So it's expensive to buy, but it's cheaper to run. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of like the toss up between you know, when you get a new phone, you can either buy the phone outright and then you don't pay anything per month or you just pay the basics per month to get your data and your calls and your texts or whatever. Or you can go onto a bill pay. You pay very little upfront, but you're paying for it then for two years. It's it's kind of like along those lines. So it's very expensive to buy these A-rated appliances upfront, but you will save money in the long run. And given these appliances are not like a phone. They don't, um, like in two years, they're not going to be redundant. You would hope that these would last 10, 12, 15 years. 
in the long run, buying the A-rated appliance is better. Um, so yeah, I've, I've named quite a few things there, but all of these things are pushing towards Ireland trying to achieve their renewable energy goals. Um, talked about electric cars, so they're moving, I mean, a lot of, I'm pretty sure Toyota, Lexus, I want to say BMW, but I'm not sure about them, have completely moved away from diesel cars. They just don't make them anymore. So if you want to buy a brand new Lexus, for example, or a brand new Toyota, it's going to be hybrid at the very least and electric then. So again, this is just another push towards um, a more sustainable future, not relying on fossil fuels. Okay, so that's that bit, which, like I said, kind of links to the chapter we were talking about the other day, but I just felt because sustainability was here in the specification that I should put it in there. Um, here talking about digital electronics. So, um, I mean, you know what electronics are. It, it They make up so much. I'm actually sitting here with my MacBook in front of me. I have my tablet beside me I have my iPad I have my phone I have a calculator like I have so much digital electronics around me and that's you know not mentioning the television to my right and I have a Google Home to the other side you know this huge amount of technology that kind of consumes our daily life and um, couple of things like I said this is more just to kind of get you thinking okay so the first thing we're going to think about here is telecommunications so this is um keeping in touch by telephone okay so obviously this has massively improved I mean when I was a teenager so like I would have been 16 it's not a huge amount of time ago when I went away during the summer um, I would have to buy like a call card and use a public street telephone. That's how you, you know, that's how you contact at home to say, listen, I'm okay and I've arrived and I'm grand. And that would have been quite normal. You know, my first mobile phone, I think I was 18. So I didn't grow up having that kind of instant communication. If you go abroad or something like that you don't have those instant um connections with home so i suppose what you have to think about uh with questions or the type of questions you could be asked is how do they impact these three things the science environment and society so uh the science the popularity of mobile phones has resulted in a greater need for people to be skilled in electronics and computing so um that was something when like in the last maybe 10 years the amount of courses in college that have popped up around around electronics computing and now pushing even more forward like um, coding and things like that like those courses didn't exist when I was I mean yeah there was electronic engineering maybe but there wasn't a vast array of courses around the whole world of digital technology because we just we weren't in that world yet there wasn't the need for people to be so skilled to make I don't know the the next best mobile phone to have the best camera I mean for a long time there they were getting smaller and smaller and smaller so to make the technology smaller and um, now it seems to be that focus on the big screen and clarity and good photographs and um, so yeah in order for for the technology to keep moving on, we need more and more and more skilled and trained people. And as a result, there are college, college courses popping up in this area all over the place. So I think I think I was in third year when somebody, we, we had this guy in the speaker and he was saying, you know, or was he in first year actually? And he was saying that the courses you're going to apply for probably aren't available yet. You know, the, it, it was starting when I was in school to change you know that for a long time you you could only go into a limited amount of courses and then all of a sudden it started to change and it's very true I think for say today's first years if they were to look at a course and say well that's what I'm going to do in a few years the odds are that will have changed or five things will have replaced it it's just all moving so quickly and um, the environment so how has it impacted the environment and um, 
it, it's actually a massive problem. And if you look into it, and um, they have this like technology conference in Vegas every year, and they recently had it like um, obviously online or via Zoom or whatever. Um, and this was actually a big focus of the event because technology dates so quickly. Um, all of the big players, you know, like Apple or Samsung, um, they're all making a big push towards this um, reusable. So again, this sustainability thing that you're not just getting your phone and throwing it in the bin after two years, that they can actually make use of the technology. They can take it apart. They can use it again. Um, and there's a massive push and kind of a pressure on the industry to be better at that I suppose because they haven't been up to now and then the impact of telecommunications on, telecommunications on society and um, again this is kind of it's a debate to have um depending on where you land I mean you definitely in the the childhood you guys are having is very different from the childhood I would have had. But similarly, the childhood I had would have been different from my parents and grandparents. So, you know, generations are different anyway, but there is a big difference with yourselves. There's no switching off. I mean, I remember if I was out on the road, chatting with my friends, whatever, as soon as you walked away and said goodnight, that was it. You know, there was no no text followed you home. Nobody could keep communicating. Once you left to go home, that was the end of it, like. I'm like I genuinely I would have been your age and if something happened out in the road and we didn't get a chance to talk about it and then I went into the house I'd write like a little note and then the following day I'd pass it in class <laughs> you know as in it was completely different it sounds like I'm from the stone ages but like that is how we did it because there just wasn't any communication now you could argue that that's a good or a bad thing I don't know and um, I would have been very interested to hear your views on it and um, but again they are questions that could be answered or could be asked how are tele how has telecommunications affected society and um, this bit here is talking about like if I wanted to go for a, to go and meet a friend I'd have to get up off the couch go outside knock on her door say like you know are you coming out or whatever and um, where obviously you guys can just text and um, so are we becoming lazier is there less get up and go I'd argue that maybe some of the issues are more psychological as opposed to physical, but again, it's more just where do you stand on it? What would your thoughts be? Um, nothing really different here. So it's the same thing around the internet and telecommunications because they're so heavily intertwined. Um, you can have a look there at the number of people using the internet. That's up to 2012. So I don't know what the number is for 2021, but feel free to look it up. Um, I can only imagine. So again, how has it impacted science? Um, same three things. So how, how has the internet impacted science? Like, the internet is the most amazing encyclopedia. Um, again, in college, if I was doing an assignment, I had to go to the library and I had to try and take out all of the physics books and I'd have them all open in front of me and that's how you research. There was no such thing as just Googling it or just looking into it or whatever. And so it was just different, you know, that that's just the way it was. That's the way we researched. And so it has opened up an absolute, I mean, in that way, it's amazing what you can find out, what you can learn and the quality of the work you can produce. Um, it does have another flip side where you have to be careful about your sources and things like that. Like, is what you're reading actually correct or is it complete crap? You know, hard to know. Um, so again, have a think about that. Um, the environment, how has the internet affected the environment? Um, this is an interesting one. I kind of like this as an example. I was trying to think of my views on this. Um, but this is because of the internet, because of the improvements in telecommunications and the improvements in, um, yeah, just how, how connected we are. We can find out so much more about, I mean, you could argue the improvements in just air travel and things like that. You know, the fact that there are so many available flights and it's so much cheaper to fly than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Um, 
people travel a lot people for work I mean there are people who travel to like Brussels three times a week to go to work which is just their norm so as a result they get to travel to these places they see things like the classic example and they have it here it's it's brilliant um I don't know if any of you have done them travel but this idea of renting bicycles we can do this in Dublin now so you have bicycles kind of on the side of the road and you pay like you go over you scan your phone you have an app on your phone you scan your phone it opens the lock, the bike works and you get on the bike, you cycle and then you give it back and it charges you a certain amount for renting that bicycle. Um, like these are widely used across Europe now but it started in one city. One city that had it, somebody went, thought it was a good idea and now it's expanding. I was in Barcelona just before Covid happened back in February and last February and they have the same deal but with like electric scooters like it's amazing so we were able to rent an electric scooter get on and scoot around the city and see all the sights and it was brilliant like so things like that that you because of how connected everything is and how easily accessible all these places are and how easy it is to talk to somebody who lives there you can generate all these ideas and obviously having more transport like that around will massively help the environment and that's just one example. Um, society, again, you know, we, t we talked a little bit about how the internet affects society when we were talking about telecommunications. And this is an interesting take on it. Um, you can book a holiday, order a book, buy clothes on the internet. And like, you know, go onto Amazon, you can pretty much buy anything. But, and again, I don't know how much you listen to the uh, news, but there's a massive problem. They say the high street is dying. So people are not shopping anymore. People aren't going out and just doing their shopping, like buying jeans, buying tops, buying shoes. The vast majority of it is done online now. So companies are having to plunge all their resources into online, um, into their website, into you know their customer support line, stuff like that, rather than into the shop itself, because people just aren't going. Um, so there's a massive transition happening in the retail industry because they really don't know what to do because obviously having a shop open and staffed is expensive um, but there's such a drop off now this is before COVID obviously COVID has absolutely taken that apart but yeah so people don't really um, I have an aunt who runs a pretty big shop in town and like when you speak to her about how what she's going to do moving forward she just doesn't know because like you kind of have to take a leap of faith do you go fully online and close the shop or if that's the case do you you know then you've completely lost that customer face-to-face -face time which is what they pride themselves on you know so it's anyway it's an interesting conversation so that's it all of that discussion had we've had it in class I would have liked to have heard your inputs and if anybody does want to share their inputs please do um, but it's not so much about me teaching you anything about this it's more about you having an opinion about you thinking okay this is the pros of it this is the cons of it and this is where I lie okay so that if you had to answer a question on it you'd be able to sit, give me a pro of telecommunications a con of telecommunications on let's say the environment and what's your opinion on it? So do you think overall technology has been good for the environment or do you think overall it's been bad for the environment? Does that make sense? So yeah, um, have a listen to this and as opposed to kind of, I suppose taking down my views, maybe write down your own views on each of the different things. Yeah. And um, so I suppose what I want you to do for today is Thursday. So this is for Monday. Um, do you know what we'll do actually because your revision is due for Monday we'll leave this till next Thursday is that fair enough um, so what I would like you to do is basically a little sen sentence or two about how you think you don't need to split it up just how you think the whole world of technology has affected science so do you think it's been positive negative give reasons how has the whole world of technology affected the environment positive negative give reasons and likewise for society okay like i mean obviously if you 
feel very passionately about it and you want to write an essay that's fine but I only need a few lines on how you think it has affected each of the three positively or negatively and um a little bit of an explanation so you can't just say oh technology has had a positive effect on science full stop explain does that make sense so we'll leave that for next thursday because your revision notes and questions are due for monday all right so have a nice weekend and i will chat to you on monday